is very, very small. So the question also then becomes is what is the maximum uh, number of results that the API returns, in this case in terms of comments, and then how many comments does the tool that you have chosen ingest? Are they the same? If they're not the same, why not? Does it matter to you? So just to, to wrap up on an example is um, every year students have to write a 3,000 word uh, essay and they choose one of 10 essay briefs and every year there's a brief on YouTube. So last year it was the Icebook Challenge which was incredibly popular. I do not want to ever read any essays on the Icebook Challenge again. Um, and this year it was Beyonce's formation video. So um, I won't go through all of the kind of requirements but just to give you a sense of um, how these briefs are structured is they have to answer specific elements, how they found the video, uh, describe the video, um, and then in, in, in the case of Beyonce, uh, they had to find another, they had to choose another two videos, so they could choose maybe the live performance of the Super Bowl or a lyrics video, and they had to defend those choices, then they had to describe the metadata um, to get them to really think about what do you see around these comments, talk about the API, and then perform a content analysis of 100 comments per video, um, looking at different aspects that you might look at, including sentiment uh, theme. They had to, of course, um, report integrated reliability, and for extra points, they could also build networks. So, in order to prepare them for this, we did a workshop exercise, and this became necessary after various fiascos with the Icebox Challenge um, uh, result, uh, essay from last year. One of the things that became really clear to me is that students really, really struggle with identifying the right content for analysis and thinking about keywords and being able to find uh, the data that they need. So what we ended up doing is we went on YouTube and I simply asked them, find the Beyonce formation video. And they really, really struggled, right? So this was for me really interesting to understand why they're struggling. So we did a number of exercises. So you have to imagine students sitting in a research lab, 40 students at a time, all shouting results and all hearing different answers, right? So that becomes really interesting when they're like, why do you have um, you know, half a million and why do you have um, you know, 5,000? Then we went through the top 10 results to then try and see who could find the real formation video. And again, the results were really um, interesting. And to then talk about um, if you were designing a tool for YouTube, what would you want it to do in order to do the research you want to do around Beyonce's formation video? And one of the things that um, came out really, really strongly is that they all wanted to see the first <coughs> set of comments. So they all wanted to see the first thousand comments, not the last ten, a uh, hundred. They wanted to see the first comments in order to understand how is the discussion shaping across the lifetime of a video. So just to show you the, the screenshots, so this is what happens when you um, type in uh, Beyonce formation. So these were the simple instructions and already here it went wrong many, many times. Right, so even when you tell students, type in Beyonce formation, many fail to do this. This was a huge surprise to me. So many would put Beyonce formation video or Beyonce formation official video. And then when we were shouting out results and they had differences, we would, I would ask them, but what did you put? And then they might say Beyonce formation official video. And then I would say, but that wasn't what I asked you to do. So. If you don't understand that there are consequences to putting in different keywords and you think that you're all getting the same results, you have a problem right off the bat. So if you can't defend or can't justify why you've put a particular search term, you, you are going into dangerous territory with your results. So in terms of the results then, it's actually quite far down the line here where you have to go through a playlist to dig out the official video. And again, many, many struggled with um, finding the video. So this is the, the video which comes from um, Beyonce's official YouTube channel. And so what we then looked at once we, you know, and this took about 20 minutes to get them here, right? So this kind of whole idea of like they're young and they know how to use social media was you know, for me, it was really interesting as an educator to realize how, how much they struggled um, to kind of to get here and to, to get them to talk about why they struggled. So then when you're on the official video, um, we talked about the metrics, what can you see? And again, they really struggled with describing these. 
But then when you go to the comments, there's nearly 43,000 comments. So if you think about the limitations of the API, there's nearly 43,000 comments, but the API only gives you the last 100. That, that seems like a really you know, poor result, especially if you think about what is in that video and what kind of political statement that video was and what richness there could be and I'm sure is in those 43,000 comments, especially if you're able to look at the first 10,000, right? So what is not available to you is a snapshot, if you think about YouTube as an archive, a snapshot of what were people responding to in terms of a really important political um, video and an act of activism by a global superstar, it's not available, unless you're willing to click through all of those results manually, and we talk, talk about that as well. The other thing that they struggled with, and uh, I was very surprised, is to, yeah, um, yes, wrapping up, um, is that they weren't able to talk about how a YouTube channel is verified, right? So when I was asking, why do you think this is an official channel, or why do you think this is the official video, they would say things like, well, it says official. And, I was, and then I would say, but how do you think YouTube videos are uploaded? And they really struggled. And so when, you know, we would say, well, but anybody could type anything into the title, and they could use things like official, this is the official Beyonce video, why do you think that is truthful? And they really struggled with that concept. And so I had to literally say, if you hover over the tick, if it says verified, that's an authentic account. And, and this came as a surprise to them. So um, also the difference between the artist uh, side and the Vivo side. So all of these things are things that maybe we assume they know and can do, but they really, really struggled with. So then just uh, the, the final points about what assumptions do we have about their literacy skills and what, what training do we need to do? How can we think about students you know, as active users and turn them into active researchers? There are different skill sets. <coughs> students really tr struggle with identifying the right content, which means that they struggle with identifying the right data. They can't talk about it. They can't talk about the choices that they've made in terms of keyword searches, hashtags, tags. All of these, are, I think, are serious issues. But exploring the web interface can help them build critical uh, <coughs> skills in terms of being able to identify data, but also to really start talking about tools. Because once um, data from a tool is in a spreadsheet, pretty much nobody will go back to inspect every single link to see, is it what I want? Right? Once it's in a spreadsheet, you're kind of like, you know, dazzled by the results, and it becomes really difficult to inspect the results. So I think that Teaching these data literacy skills is really, really important. This, this, this kind of research is really mainstreaming now, and if we're not teaching our students these skills, and if we're not thinking about these skills ourselves, um, I think this could be an issue. YouTube has become a really well-known platform, and it's a, an amazing platform for teaching research method skills on, also because there's only a limited set of tools. So Mike's is one, uh, Bernard Readers at Amsterdam is another one, which means that they can really assess these tools um, uh, quite easily, and they can develop transferable <coughs> skills for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and others. Um, in order to get them to answer these questions, one of the things that um, I really, really try to, to teach them is to really try and combine different approaches and to start to understand the limitations of different approaches and, and really build confidence, um, and to see tools in the surface of research and not the reason to do research. Thanks.